Hi, I'm Lara Datta, Miss Universe 2000, and you're watching Tanak Television, the number one entertainment program in South Florida. In the last six years that India has entered the international beauty contest, we have produced six winners, two titles of Miss Universe and three of Miss World. And now, what does that tell us? Hi, I'm Preet Sahi for Dhanak Television. And today we have this incredible opportunity that we'll get to know a little more of the Miss Universe 2000, Lara Datta. Hi. Hi, Lara. I'd like to welcome you to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. Thank How did you like, so you like your trip so far? I do. It's incredible. I got here last evening and the hotel's wonderful, so staying here is great. And I was at an Indian event yesterday, so it was good to spend some time with your own fellow men. <laughs> the title, Miss Universe, is such a powerful title, especially to hold it for the rest of your yes. life. How did, how was your life before and how did this title change your life? I've been a model in Bombay for the last four and a half years, so where a profile was considered, I already had a profile, but it was a lot more just in your country, you know, and people around India knew who you were. So I guess since Miss Universe, life has just gotten a lot bigger and better, <laughs> and it's on a larger scale. So I share it now with billions of people worldwide, and that's what makes it special and beautiful. Your final answer that you gave at the pageant, um, saying that the pageant sets forth a platform yes. for any contestant, mm -hmm. it establishes a career for the rest of your life. Yes. How do you think this is going to change, even though you know, after Miss Universe you get so many opportunities, yeah. what is the strongest desire in your mind that Miss Universe is going to help you achieve? Well firstly, like you said earlier, it brings so many opportunities your way. It opens a lot of doors to you because the people that you meet, the connections that you make, the alliances that you make with the organizations that you work with. It's incredible and I don't think there's anything today that I, I wanted to do I wouldn't be able to do or the people that I know would not be able to open those doors for me. So it is and the whole concept about Miss Universe has changed so much from the past because usually people you know just looked at it in a very beauty pageant literal sense of the way but today the president is a 30 year old young woman you know her sole aim is to advance careers build it build this platform this network from where Women in a whole, not just one girl who wins, but women in a whole can, you know, sort of forge ahead and do things that they would like to do in life. How did the former Miss Universe Sushmita Sain and Miss World Ashwara Rai prepare you in entering for the contest? <laughs> well, I've known um, Sosha Nash for quite a few years and before I left um, for Cyprus, I sat down with Sosha and I said, okay, so tell me what goes on. And, you know, and what she said was very true. She says, no matter how much anyone prepares you, until you get there, you never know. Which is true, because once I got to Cyprus, it was three weeks, it was hard work, there was stress. It's an incredible experience, so I, and you're not ready for it. You know, you just get there and it's so much in the moment that you need to be there you know, mentally calm, physically fit, and very, very focused all the time. <laughs> the fact that, uh, you know, you were born and brought up in India, and you know, you come out, you get this incredible opportunity, yes. and then you talk about modern and traditional in an Indian woman yes and knowing the fact that you know you were born and brought up in India you came here you experienced both the lives comment on that modern and traditional in an Indian woman well I think where the traditional is concerned the Indian woman is brought up always and has been for many years with family being the core of or the center of her life you know so she knows that at some point of time she's gonna have a family of her own and then looking after her husband and her children and her home is was her sole purpose but today the Indian woman is managing her workplace as efficiently as she's managing her home so she's sort of broken down the walls the you know conventional ways of thinking that were put up around her saying looking after your house is your sole job and she's going out there saying no at the same time I can have a career and be damn good at it like I am at looking after my family so I, and this beautiful blend that's there is really helping us girls in the West to sort of make our mark in the world because it's it's like a harmony that you have so it isn't that you're ambitious and career oriented and nothing else matters you are career oriented you are ambitious at the same time you have that compassion you have that softness so it makes a difference when you go out now in your reign as Miss Universe do you look at this as an opportunity to show the world what an Indian woman is about or is this about Lara Dutta's opportunity and her career 
Now, well, I've always, whenever I've traveled, I've always tried to maintain my Indian identity with my clothes or, you know, just even if I had a bindi on my head or something like that. And uh, I am Miss Universe, yes, but wherever you go, no matter where you go in the world, the first question is asked is, oh, she's Miss Universe, where is she from? You know, and I'm proud to say I'm Indian. I'm proud to say I come from India. I'm proud that to be the universe of the millennium and come from India because it just goes to show that India is coming in into the new millennium with a bang and says, okay, we're leading ahead, we're going ahead with, you know, information technology, um, the beauty business, name it, <laughs> we have it, which is good. Let me tell you that the first Miss Universe, Miss India pageant was held in India in 1947. And in 1966, the first Indian was titled Miss World, and we're talking 1966. Lara. India has produced so many beauty queens yes. since then, especially in the last six years. Yes. Tell me, how is this increasing number of beauty queens each year going to change the Indian culture, especially the status of an Indian woman in Indian society? Yeah, the most often asked question uh, from the press is, because of so many multinationals coming into the country, is that why the Indian girls are winning? Because they are exploiting the girls to enter the market. And Femina Miss India is, was, a, was started as a promotion for the magazine Femina. That was all that it was, it was a promotion. And in the last couple of years, there has been an exodus of winners because finally the organization, the Times of India and Femina, that runs the Femina Miss India pageant, has got the formula down to pat, what they need to give us for us to be winners there. They're not changing your personality, they're not changing the person you are. No one can do that in a matter of two or three months. What they're doing is really enhancing the person that you are. You know, if you have something to say, have the confidence to go out there and say it. You know, carry yourself well, be poised, be sure about yourself. And honestly, they always say, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit, but it's all about confidence. <laughs> but it's, um, and, and I think that's, and what's happening is that there is an evolution of the woman taking place in India, like I said earlier. And for us to be a, wo a woman winning being on an international stage, meeting the people that we do, having these opportunities. Whatever field it is that a woman wants to go into, at the end of the day, you have to make your choices. What is the career that I want to go into? What is it that I'm going to be the best at? And go for it. And it's just a small example to say that if I could dream about this and achieve it, you can dream about being an astronaut and achieve it. You, know, so it's you used to dream of being a model when you were a little girl. When did the, you know, when did that first step happen that you got the opportunity that you actually felt you could achieve your goals? <laughs> My parents insist that from the time I was four years old, every picture that they took of me, I had a little pose in it. <laughs> so I don't know about modeling. I know I watched my first Miss World um, at Ole Miss Universe when I was about seven years old. And at that time I said, okay, that's what I want to be because, you know, there's all these glamorous women walking down this stage and very, you know, exquisite. So at that time, I think it was the glamour that said, okay, that's where I want to be. But I took it seriously for the last two years about entering Miss India. And in fact, I entered Miss India last year. And I backed out of it last minute because I didn't think I was prepared enough. Or I, was, or I thought I was too young. Also, I was in my last year of college and I wanted to finish that. Oh, did you? Also, because it's nicer to be Miss India 2000 than 1999. <laughs> okay. But uh, no, but I worked on it for the last two years in the sense I took it more seriously. I prepared myself and half the battle is mentally won. If you're prepared mentally, it's a psychological battle that you fight because 79 girls, everyone is beautiful. Everyone is intelligent. It's literally about who's the last one to survive <laughs> and, you know, the survivor wins. So, it's so in your modeling career, which all companies have you worked with? What all achievements have you... I started modeling when I was 16 years old and L'Oreal had just come into the Indian market with their skincare range called Synergy. And they were looking for a face, fresh face that I'd never modeled before. And they tested about 200 girls. And I finally landed the contract and I worked with them for four and a half years. But I have, must have endorsed every product <laughs> under the sun from televisions to tires to ice cream <laughs> to the works. And it's been fun. Um, I've done, I was with Bombay Dying for three years. Now I'm with CR Arms and the famous, and in fact, uh, the new commercial that we shot has been the longest commercial ever on Indian television. It's a 120 second commercial. So it's, uh, it's incredible. I've, I've jumped over cliffs for commercials. I've uh, done pretty amazing stuff, ridden my own camels. <laughs> okay. So it's great. One of your causes for um, being the Miss Universe yes. 
was HIV and AIDS. Yes. And you said you would talk in the Indian community or in the Indian environment about things that have been enveloped before. Yes. Comment on that. Growing up in India, you know, I went through a stage where my parents are very open-minded, very, very broad-minded, and I'm lucky to have that opportunity where, you know, I've been lucky to have an education, have the parents who said, go out there, make your own decisions, you know, but deal with the consequences, don't come running back to us. But still, to a very great extent, I could not talk to them about um, sexual intercourse or talk to them about, you know, drugs or alcohol. It wasn't that you that they said don't approach us and talk to us about it but it was just this thing because none of the girls in my class were able to speak to their parents about it so I was like okay if they can't do it then maybe I can't do it and what started happening was that we started talking among our own peer group you know and I realized today that that helped me so much and which is also what I want to propagate in India to create an awareness amongst the youth everyone is aware everyone knows what HIV is everyone knows what AIDS is but this constant feeling of, I'm not going to get it. it, it won't happen to me. They don't realize that in the next 10 years, one person out of every family is going to be HIV positive. That's how close to home it's getting and people don't realize that. You're provided with very, very basic sexual education, sex education in, in schools and those are only the schools that can provide that. So there are a lot of, lot of young people, teenagers, women out there that do not, are not consciously aware of safe sex which is what I try to you know, create an awareness about while I travel, the seminars that I speak at. Um, we work with the Harvard AIDS Institu Institute. We work with um, the American Foundation for AIDS Research. We work with Hale House that deals with little babies who are HIV positive. So there's a lot of work going on and I want to take that, take these connections that I've made back to India with me to set up something, you know, to do, either do it with schools, do it through PACT, which is a, a UNFPA um, campaign with, for peer educators, meaning kids in school speaking to other kids. You know, and you need that sort of interaction and that's what I was trying to get across to people, saying you know, parents, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, whatever, talk things out and it's important to do that. Right. You know? I'm going to ask you a question that you probably have been bombarded all along, <laughs> which is movies, Bollywood and Miss <laughs> Universe, which you know, even oh. though I know you're used to answering that again and again, but yeah. our audience also wants to I know. know. Honestly, I really haven't thought about uh, movies as a career very, very seriously because this year there's a lot on my plate and I can't do much this year because I'm tied down with the work that I do as Miss Universe. I'm not saying no to movies. It is an option that I'm going to consider, but I'd like to direct instead of act. So I'm hoping to get on the other side of the camera and direct some. And um, yeah. You've been talking about filming documentaries yes. also? Yes. I was planning uh, when I give up my title next year, I'm going to go to back into university and do a filming course at NYU. So it should be exciting. Okay. In the end, I'd like you to give a piece of advice to the young girls watching, especially teenagers. These are Indian girls who've been brought, born and brought up over here. How they could create that balance that you know they take the best from the American culture yet stick to that traditional part that we think is so very important that if you give it up, you really lose that integrity. Yeah. Um, for the young benefit of the young girls, give them a piece of advice to create that balance. No, I think uh, any Indian woman, anywhere in the world, it's in the gene. She's born with that, with a compassion, with a quietness, with a peacefulness within her that's come down centuries. And yet she's out there, like I said earlier, saying, I can do it and that's wonderful. To youngsters out there, there's a growing trend right now where, and I know speaking because I was in the colleges recently speaking to the young girls, where girls of 13, 14, 15 have decided I want to be a model and I will do whatever it takes to be a model. I think it's important to find the niche that you fit into, to find what you're going to be good at. If it's modeling, that's great. If it's not, there are a thousand career opportunities that you can choose from and to really go for them with everything that you've got but the best thing that you can do for yourself is give yourself an education the most incredible gift you can give yourself because at the end of the day I'm so glad I don't know what I'm going to do with the little piece of paper or the degree that I have 
in economics. I don't even know if I want to do something more in economics, but I'm so glad that I did not give up that education, that I went through it and I finished it. You know, and I think that's like that's what I one thing that I would want to tell you know say to them to continue pursue their dream, keep alive their identity, not to lose it in the middle of the whole struggle and day to day like mundane life and little things. To keep alive their spirit, their identity, and you can conquer anything you want. <laughs> Thank you.